Okay, so we're just listening to Jewel as she offers us some pearls of wisdom from her perspective, starting at the beginning again. We'll give you the link uh, when we're done sharing this video. Who would you be if you dropped all of your identities? Um, uh, hmm. gosh. songwriter, a visual artist, and I also work in behavioral health. Being able to find my inner self has had lots of iterations, times where I lost contact with it, and times where I've been more in touch with it, and it's also been a relationship that has deepened. When I was young, I'm kind of audio, I also have synesthesia, and so when I shut my eyes I do see colors, and when I sing I see colors and shapes. I remember being very young and hearing my mom call my name. And there were all these colors. Then when she said, Jewel. Well, I didn't know until Nevada drivers about oh, this new rule. If you're dude, driving less than 50 miles a day that. and you have automatic no, headlights, you can be paying so much less on your car insurance. Even more than that, if you're a good driver and you haven't had yep. a ticket in the last... I was like, that's me. That's the name for these colors that I see inside my body. Another one was when I moved out at 15. I was living in a house with an abusive dad. My mom had left. I had been reading philosophy at the time, been looking at the idea of nature versus nurture, and I was peeling an orange one day. I realized that my nurture, the way I was raised, caused me to form personality traits, like a low self-esteem, being guarded, not trusting adults, the list goes on. And that became my exterior, it became the way that I protected myself from the world. What I realized is I spent all of my life identifying with the peel. I spent zero time thinking about the fruit. And I realized at that moment that I really had to spend serious time dedicating what I call going down and in. Whenever I have a problem with people or I'm angry or these things are going on, that's all a distraction. I have to go down and in and understand why am I letting that make me angry? Why am I perceiving that as I'm worthless? And that's when I really started to be able to get my life to change. Again, what do you have to ignore to keep believing what you believe? When I was about 18, I was homeless because I wouldn't have sex with a boss. Uh, he refused to give me my paycheck. I tried to get other jobs, but I was having panic attacks. I was becoming agoraphobic. Um, I was shoplifting a lot. My life was really grinding to a halt. And I was very lonely. And I realized I kind of deserved to be lonely because nobody actually knew me. And my desire to connect became stronger than my desire to be safe. And I decided to do something that was very radical for me, which was to say the truth out loud, expose myself to people. This is Jewel. Hi. This is a place called The Interchange. This is where she started off, what, about a year and a half ago? Oh, yes. I found a coffee shop that was going out of business. I asked them if they could stay open for one more month. And she agreed. Her name's Nancy. And I said, can I keep the door money if I bring people in and you keep the food and coffee? We agreed to that. But my very first show, two surfers showed up, and I sang these poor surfers for, for five hours. I sang to them about the most honest, gut-wrenching, vulnerable truths about myself. I read poems the whole nine yards. <laughs> and these two surfers cried the whole time, and I cried on stage. And we hugged afterwards because it was such an honest, real, authentic experience we just had all had together. And for me, that was when that really became a powerful thing. I knew that would be a life path for me, that I would be safer in the world the more honest I was instead of the more guarded I was. When have you experienced a profound sense of disconnection from others and what did you learn from it? I think one of the most surefire ways to disconnect me from others is shame. It instantly isolates me. It instantly makes me feel separate from... For me, shame feels like a real tightness and a denseness. It just feels like I'm lost in a fog. It feels like I can't see. I can't see what I did wrong. I get disoriented feeling. 
And so when I notice I'm agitated, when I'm noticing I'm getting triggered, Take a deep breath. I just soften, I breathe, my posture is changing, my blood pressure is changing, it's different biochemicals being released, it's my vascular system dilates, blood pressure comes down. And then I just need to listen with no agenda. Really. And so that really helps me. It helps me when I'm feeling shame to stop and go, okay, this is a feeling in my body. <laughs> How do I want to redirect this? And so I turn it into a river in my mind. Where do I want this energy in this water to go? That gets me back into behavior and gets me into, okay, now what am I going to do about it? And then I can start to move on. These next five years might be the most important five so years of your life. You have to questions. grow the business you're in, but you also and have to just... start pondering what this really means to you and how you deal with shame and how you deal with um, stressors in your body. Then <clears throat> remember to breathe. It is important to breathe every day and it's important to take some time to bring in that wonderful breath of life and release all of the ego and tension and doubt and fear. We love you. Have a great day.